Your friends are out there. Ah, hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with best hair, and welcome to week eight of. brings us back to our comfort zone of Mila Jovovich movies with the Resident Evil series. And Resident Evil Afterlife. Released in 2010, just after Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil Afterlife both incorporated aspects of the game into it and still had to follow Resident Evil Extinction, which means the plot uh, still really doesn't match any of the games. Not that I'm expecting any of them to at this point, it's just the, the, the movie series is called Resident Evil. Which means I have to explain what this is. Remember how there was that plot last movie about the last hope for humanity in Alaska? Well, that's what's going on here. Alice must find that city and her friends. However, this has to be stretched out over 90 minutes, so of course that doesn't go right. And next thing you know, she's in Los Angeles with a new cast of miscellaneous unimportant survivors. Oh, and some Resident Evil characters, sometimes. But what about that clone army? Well, let's take a look at Resident Evil Afterlife and find out. We open up to legs. Japanese legs. Man, I already like where this is going. <laughs> eh, not a deal breaker, I'm still into it. This zooms out into a narration by Alice, played by Mila Jovovich, explaining, once again, the backstory of the movie series. She worked for Umbrella in a secret lab. The virus got out, everyone turned into zombies. Then, in the last movie, the virus destroyed the entire world, and only a few survives remain. Plus the Umbrella Corporation, who has hidden in their underground bunkers slash evil laboratories. They felt secure in their high-tech fortress. But they were wrong. Well, if it's taken four years, they were at least good for a little while. Much like the leg zombie who somehow made it all this time before an Umbrella goon managed to take her down. But what's this? Something else is about, and it's killing Umbrella's men! This is reported to Chairman Wesker, played this time by Sean Roberts. Looking to get to the bottom of this, Wesker calls up Captain Hotaka, played by Dennis Akiyama. Report your situation. Everything is quiet here. No sign of intruders? Otaka, we have movement. I didn't say they didn't have intruders, just that they were quiet about it. An elevator is on the move, so Wesker orders the security teams there on the double! And you gotta hand it to the Umbrella Corporation, they always have the best tunes for their evil underground secret labs. They surround the elevator, but that just means the intruder can slip behind them through the vents. Mila Jovovich, her hair slicked back completely. She tears into them with stars and swords, wearing some stylish infiltrator gear with either five inch heels or flat heels, depending on how much she has to run in that shot. But once she slaughters them all, she finds out that's not all of them. But fortunately, in all that killing and maintaining her combo, she managed to charge her ultimate attack. So that group is taken care of. But more are coming. This means she can... <laughs> fucking die. Like, ten minutes into the movie. Ah, great, now this can fade to black and come back with six days ago. But wait! That was merely a clone, Alice! As, if you recall, the sequel bait in the last movie was the army of hundreds of Alice clones! So not only is one of them good enough to take on scores of Umbrella goons, the Umbrella Corporation is arguably outnumbered on top of it! Wesker kills one of them, but she drops grenades and they blow the fuck up! Fortunately for him, though, he got out of frame just fast enough to avoid any serious injuries, and hops into a handy-dandy escape vehicle, guaranteeing his own survival, as he sets off a purge bomb, completely annihilating the Japan Umbrella Lab and the hundreds of Alice clones within in a singularity implosion. Leaving one alive, the original Alice. Great, you know, this is exactly what I hate about sequel bait. 
It's either completely disregarded anyway, or if the movie does bring it up in the sequel, it's only to find out how they can wipe the slate completely clean and just go ahead and do whatever other story they planned on doing anyway. Speaking of wiping the slate clean, hey, Albert Wesker jabs at us with a T-Virus antibodies! That's right, kids. The power creep was getting kinda crazy, and before we risk Alice transforming into a super Yovich, it's best to nip this in the bud and just strip over her superpowers completely. Last words. Thank you. For killing you. For making me human again. Hold on, hold on. Uh Okay, so not only do we have the cure for the T-Virus from the first movie, but her blood also reverses the T-Virus. But also we have this anti-T-Virus, anti-body virus, anti -vi that, that the new thing that also gets rid of the T-Virus. And yet, all series, we have not managed to unzombify one motherfucker? But before he can kill her, the craft smashes into the side of a mountain! And she just gets up, dusts herself off, and walks away. <laughs> right after we establish that she does not have superpowers anymore. That's just Milejovic. Skipping ahead six months, we finally start on the real sequel. The survivors have already headed to Alaska in search of Arcadia, humanity's final sanctuary. A haven free of infection. And it looks like before she escaped the Umbrella Lab, she stole their tunes. But when she lands, she doesn't find anyone awaiting her arrival. Merely tons of abandoned airplanes. And of course the Umbrella helicopter they hijacked at the end of the last movie. When she left the group to defeat Umbrella while they fled to safety. Good luck, Kmart. On second thought, she'd have been more lucky they didn't find her at a Dick's Sporting Goods. Seeing that there isn't a soul around, no happy human city, no drinking, dancing, or Xbox LAN parties, Alex slumps down and whips out the camcorder for some nice depressed vlogging. What if I'm the last one? What if there's no one else? No one to watch these tapes. Now come on, it's not that there's no one out there, Alice. Your videos get no views because you've been shadow banned. But what's this? Someone else is here after all. Someone who punches Alice in the face and tries to kill her. Someone by the name of Claire Redfield. Played once again by Allie Larder. who's under the control of a bug robot thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really play Resident Evil 5. Whatever it is, Alice gets it off the woman. But that doesn't mean she's back to her old self. Seems one of the side effects of cybernetic mind control parasites is amnesia. Any of this sound familiar? Mikey, Carlos, LJ, Kmart. Olive Garden! Uh, come on, you have to remember the unlimited breadsticks! Well, with nothing to show for this adventure but a Claire who can't remember who she is, Alice decides to say fuck it and leave, grabbing her new old friend and getting back in her airplane, heading south along the coast for... Um, uh, she's going to... Uh, oh, well, that's where the movie takes place, so that's where she heads. Along the way, Claire regains enough of her faculties to have a polite conversation, but Alice has to remind her of her own name. Nevertheless, they're on friendly terms around the time Alice is flying over Los Angeles and spots a group of survivors signaling for help, so she moves to land. On a rooftop. Obviously not the easiest task, and she almost falls off the other end, but Luther is like, no you don't, and grabs the airplane before it falls. And you might think that landing such a plane on that small of a rooftop is impossible, least of all without smashing into so many things and breaking the plane. But you forget, it's being piloted by Mila Jovovich. This introduces us to our new group of survivors. Luther, played by Boris Kodje, Crystal... My name's no, no, Crystal. no. Enough with the introductions. Hey, hey, I like to give credit to as many actors as I can get used to it. Bennett, played by Kim Coates, interrupted Crystal, played by Casey Clark, so that she and Kim Young, played by Norman Young, can ask Alice, has she come to help from Arcadia? She's like, no, just was passing through looking for a... Something. Angel, played by Sergio Perez Mencheta, tells Alice not to mind their disappointment so much. They've been hell-bent on this Arcadia thing for a while. Even set up some flares for them to see. So they thought they sent Alice. Who's gonna see flares from Alaska? Alaska. Alaska.
Which is where we learn that no, Arcadia is not in Alaska! Because this is the first Resident Evil movie that's really filmed on location, and fuck spending all that time in Alaska. But Arcadia was in Alaska because Arcadia is a boat, which just so happens to be going down the west coast from Alaska looking for survivors. Gotta hit those low population zones first, I guess. But their messages cut out days ago. Claire's like, oh yeah, it's a boat, duh, because I remember. People were coming to help us. What happened? Why didn't you go with the others? I don't know. Gotta love it when a character's amnesia only recovers at around the same rate that the plot points are revealed to the audience. So the plan is... Um, well, they're stuck here for a while, so better introduce the differentiated character traits. Luther is an ex-basketball player, kind of like a tall, quiet version of Augustus Cole. And Crystal is a mean cook. Bennett is just mean. He's our former movie producer and kind of our stand-in for Weinstein, so you can guess how well this movie's gonna go for him. As Kim is his only friend, but mostly because Kim was an intern and is just kind of used to it. Further into that, Sarah is Wendell, played by Fulvio Sincere, a mildly important side character who stands guard over their only prisoner. Name's Chris. Played by Wentworth Miller, who you may recognize as Michael Schofield from Prison Break. Typecast much? Chris swears he's innocent and was actually an officer before the world went to hell, but the inmates tossed him in a cell as a joke. The zombies came, residents changed, and now he's still in this cell, no one believing his story. But he swears he knows a safe way out of the building if they let him out first. So we're just gonna sit on that until sometime around Act 3. You're gonna need me! And knowing he won't be needed until then, he's just gonna keep screaming and acting like an unhinged lunatic just to keep up appearances. Not letting me out? Fine! Fine, but you better like the video! And subscribe if you haven't! You better let me out before I start telling everyone to go to my Patreon! Luther doesn't believe Chris for a second, says it's in his eyes. He looks like a killer. Alice is like, well, I'm not exactly little Susie Homemaker over here. Got ass tons of weaponry! And quarters. What would you possibly want with those? It's a hobby. Did you see how many matching outfits she had in the opening? Guaranteed she had at least a few clones working a laundromat full time just to pull that off. But in here, they should be pretty safe. Yeah, they're surrounded by zombies, but the building is locked down extra tight. Huge walls, impenetrable defenses, absolutely no way the zombie hordes get inside. Except from down below! despite the fact that the foundation should be far, far harder to crack than the walls. Anyway, we haven't had a butt-ass naked Mila Jovovich for a while, so Luther's like, hey, Alice, how about a shower scene? Those always end well in these kinds of movies. However, while tons of nudity has been scripted into plenty of the Resident Evil movies, Mila actually has refused to do the more gratuitous stuff, so she still has her clothes on when she realizes that lecherous Wendell is trying to spy on her in the shower! Oh, well, now we know he's not gonna survive this movie. Even quicker than anticipated. As zombies attack with mouth tentacles. It's got something to do with the specific virus from Resident Evil 5, but they never actually explain how that bled into the film series, besides the virtue of them both being Resident Evil. Well, now that they know that they're not safe in here anymore, they must run. But how? Well, the only one who seems to know any way to escape would be their little prisoner in his private cell, Chris. Claire? Chris Redfield! You may be wondering why he neglected to mention that part until now and just spent all his screen time screaming and yelling at people like a madman. Well, you see... Well, Claire doesn't remember anything about a brother, so as far as she's concerned, he's just Chris anyway. So, what's the way out he knows? Well, while he was working here as a police officer, they just so happen to have in storage a big-ass armored personnel carrier that can smash through the zombie hordes just as easily as it can unruly protesters. So it'll get them as far as the coast, at least, and they can raid the armory for as many anti-zombie munitions as they can carry. How do you know your unit didn't take him with him when he pulled out? Because by the end... There were a lot more guns than there were people to use them. America! 
Better hurry, because it's hammer time! Yeah, Big Boy here is also from Resident Evil 5, and no, never gets a movie explanation for being here. They figure if the big steel gate can't hold him, the little fire axe should prevent him from getting in. But oh darn it, the reason no one else knew about the armory is because it's on the lower levels which have flooded. Quite a lot. Where do you think you're going? I was a swim champ back in high school. Is that right? Well, that's great, but this maneuver is going to be pretty dangerous, and let's be real here. Now, the active participants are Chris Redfield, Alice, and you. Nevertheless, they dive down and eventually surface at the armory level. Very conveniently, not underwater, making this whole operation considerably easier. Let's go. <laughs> oh no, miscellaneous movie character didn't make it. Who could have guessed? Alice and Chris take out a couple more zombies before fleeing into the armory. The armory absolutely loaded with arms. Around this time, the B-team is breaking into the hangar with the APC. But there's a little problem. Chris forgot to mention that they had removed the engine at some point. What do we do now? I know. <laughs> it's time to switch sides. Bennett is now on Team Zombie. Since the car didn't work out and the zombies are breaking through the gate, Bennett decides it's high time to say fuck it and leave. But Kim doesn't think this is the right way to go about it. As he hesitates, that means Bennett just takes the plane himself and flies off towards Arcadia. No time to mope, there are zombies everywhere! So it's time for Resident Evil horror as badasses unload on the undead, blowing them away left and right! Most of them escape into an elevator, but Alice explodes, causing it to fall straight down into the water, breaking their fall. Despite elevator emergency brakes being a thing, and the fact that hitting the water at that speed would be about the same as hitting concrete, but never mind that, we've got an action scene going on. Alice ties herself off, tosses a bomb, and jumps off the building, running away from a huge explosion! Then a quick tuck and roll to delete that cable from existence, and she can bullet time her way through the zombie horde to get back inside with the help of her secret weapon. The quarters from her shotguns! I'm gonna go ahead and assume that she wanted her birdshot to have a little extra oomph and never heard of wax slugs or cut shells. So now what the hell do they do? Easy! The zombies came up from the underground, probably from the sewers. The sewers lead to the coast. Hey, they found their way to Arcadia! So Chris heads down, as does Luther, and now it's Kim's turn. I can't do it. You can. Let's go! But he made the rookie mistake of being a minor character in a Resident Evil movie who was also not from the video games. The Axeman cometh, whacking Alice and leaving the fight to Claire Redfield. No worries, Executioner Magini chops all the water pipes, leaving her hair soaking wet, and by extension, imbuing her with Jovovich powers by proxy. Grabbing Alice's sword off shoddy, she delivers the money shot, knocking the bastard down! But when Alice gets back up, so does he. Because as awesome as Claire can be, she ain't no Mila Jovovich. Anyway, time to hit the tunnels. Alice, Claire, Chris, and the last guy who isn't from the video games. Okay, you didn't have to get rid of literally all of them back to back. Point is, they found the sewers, so walking off into a fadeaway transition, somewhere along the way they get a boat and bring it to the ship, Arcadia. But this is about as spooky as when Alice visited Alaska earlier in the movie. They find Bennett's airplane, but no Bennett. The radio room has the message that was sent out bringing in survivors, but no one around. When delving deeper... Does that actually mean anything? I mean... Umbrella manufactured pretty much everything in this universe. But it reminds Claire that Arcadia is Umbrella, and they gave everyone the mind control bug things. But she escaped. Digging deeper, it appears as if everyone is being held here Vault 111 style. But one of those pods has blood in it. Heading to investigate, Alice finds another hangar. 
and handy dandy purge bomb. If the DM mentions it, you know it's important. Heading farther back, she finds another lab with dead bodies. And of course, Albert Wesker. Why am I not surprised? Well, who else could it possibly be? You already killed like everyone else at Umbrella. And if you were able to walk away from that explosion without your powers, obviously Wesker can. And how many other bad guys did the movie bother to establish? Drop your guns. Oh, Bennett. Right, uh, sorry, he's, he's kind of one note and very easy to forget. Wesker at least pretends to be doing things for good sometimes. Now though, his explanation of his motivations are uh, more evil. He's fueled by the T-Virus like Alice was, but the T-Virus is overpowering his DNA and stripping his humanity. So he's been effectively eating people to try and re-up his human side. However... Your DNA is stronger than the others. I ingest you. I gain control. Alice's blood is the key. Again! As such, her totally new plan is to kick his ass! Gently shooing Bennett away and then getting cornered by the CGI zombie dog... flower... things. But wait! The Redfields are here as well! So Wesker goes full-on Neo on them, not just in his wardrobe, but in his fighting style. And use of bullet time to dodge bullets, tossing the both of them into cryotubes, meaning it's all up to Alice. She takes out the zombie flower dog with George Washington and broken glass, but Bennett stabs her! So she stabs Whisker! Who the fuck are you? It's Kmart, bitch! She whacks Bennett, tossing the gun to Alice, who blows Whisker's fucking face off! Now to just free the Redfields so they can take off a little steam by shooting the hell out of Wesker on their way out. They leave Bennett behind, though. That way, when Wesker somehow survives, he can eat Bennett and feel all better, escaping out of the handy dandy hangar and activating the purge. There's just one little problem with that. It turns out that Alice put the purge bomb in his escape vehicle long before finding out that he was actually there. And awfully luckily picking the right one, because there were more aircraft in that hangar. So Wesker implodes! Therefore, happy ending! Alice, Chris, and Claire are alive. And looky here! Luther is also alive! He merely slipped out of frame. Now, with tons of survivors, they decide, you know what? Let's have Arcadia become the hope it was supposed to be. Broadcasting the message once more, but this time for realsies. But wait! The studio didn't want a happy ending, so a giant fucking army of Umbrella aircraft are coming for them! Not only that, but the mid credit scene shows that their ranks include a mind-controlled Jill Valentine. You are going to be in for the fight of your lives. Are we? Or is the next movie going to open up with an EMP storm that just crashes all the aircraft, and then the film can continue with whatever other story they actually wanted to do? Anyway, that was Resident Evil Afterlife. Man, these just keep getting weirder. But so did the games, I suppose. Four and five both shied away from the T-Virus to introduce the zombies with more, uh, tentacular persuasions, and to some extent, it's not explained whatsoever, but it's here. Both Claire and Chris Redfield are present, but neither of them really behave like their in-game counterparts. For one thing, Chris behaves like a mentally unstable convict both inside and outside of his cell, and Claire's amnesia leaves her behaving distant and hard-ass in equal measure. Though interestingly, it wasn't until Resident Evil 6 that either Redfield got an amnesia in the games, and that was Chris. The rest of the cast of characters are mostly forgettable. Angel and Crystal hang around until they need to die, uh, Bennett is obviously evil, and Kim is obviously useless, and Luther is... Uh, okay, uh, he seemed to die, but managed to survive, and honestly it could have gone either way because it didn't really matter. The presentation and action are the real stars here, with electronic beats and Matrix-style fights. Yeah, Wesker is downright dressed for the part, but you can't deny the super speed dodging bullets and bullet trails are just distinctly Matrix-inspired. At the end of the day, Resident Evil Afterlife is a fun romp for fans of the Resident Evil movie franchise, but even if you are, oh boy does it throw things at the audience without any regard for sense. The opening feels like a climax, and ending on sequel bait after showing us just how hard this movie worked to erase the implications of the last film's sequel bait, the fact is, the film's dripping in gore, apocalypse weapons, and bullet time because that's the best it has to offer. Coming in at two, zombie doggy flowers out of five. 
I don't hate it, but there ain't no way in hell anyone is going to mistake this for high-class cinema. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember... Uh... Damn amnesia! Get used to disappointment, right? That's what my agent used to say. Alright, you can let me out now! Have you liked the video yet? Subscribed? Come on, man! I just... At least... At least put something on to watch here, like... Hey, you like video game movies? I, well, I reviewed the Warcraft movie. You can check that out. Or just the algorithmically selected recommended video over there. Either way, man, I'm about to lose my mind over here. I need something. Come on.